but that is next week. Right now, we are joined in the studio by the lowest pair. It is a Kendall Winter and a Palmer T. Lee. How are you guys doing today? Good. Great. Good. Thanks for having us. Oh, uh, no, thank you very much for uh, making the time to stop by. For those of you that don't know, uh, the lowest pair are in town for a show this evening. They're going to be playing with Charlie Parr at the Tractor Tavern. And uh, showtime tonight is at 8.30. Does that sound about right? I think so, yeah. All right, well, we are going to let them do what they do best right now and, uh, and play a song for us. <laughs> gentlemen the lowest pair live in the sunlit room thank you both so much that was a wonderful what's the name of that song uh, pear tree pear tree off the uh, the newest record uh, which is called 36 cents correct? that's right yeah uh, was there any significance to that name why did you pick 36 cents for the title um, it was a little bit uh, coincidental um, we were we were uh, sitting on the porch. Kendall was drawing a bunch of potential logo ideas for like T-shirts to print oh, for cool. for tour, and uh, I mentioned that one of them kind of looked like a postage stamp. Um, and uh, Kendall sort of has an affinity to the number 36, which you could go into a little bit. So uh, I was like, "Oh, it looks like a postage stamp. You should just write like 36 cents down on the bottom of it." And uh, so we we thought the logo looked really cool, and um, then later we were talking about album art, 
um, and thought that, that, oh, that would make a really cool um, cover for, for an album. And we were like, well, we should probably then just call the record 36 Cents, since that's the other thing there written on, <laughs> on the front of it. That's, uh, that's cool. So, uh, so what is the, uh, the affinity with 36? <laughs> Ooh, well, in Hebrew, uh, the number 18 represents l'chaim, life. Okay. And um, when I had my bat mitzvah in Arkansas when I was 12 or 13, I got $36 from quite a few uh, friends and family, <laughs> which is double life. Um, so I've always just kind of been, I think, drawn to that number. And the more you're drawn to any symbolism, I believe, it starts to show up. All right, so... If, uh, if you folks want to uh, see the artwork, see what we're talking about, it's the uh, thelowestpair.com. That's your website, yeah. right? And uh, you can see a, a picture of the album cover there yeah, right the and, uh, and be able to uh, see what it is we're talking about. So uh, by all means, please do so. And uh, you can also purchase the record from the website, correct? Yeah, or at least there's a link to the label site that has an order Perfect. Database. Perfect. Now, uh, Kendall, as, uh, as you just mentioned, you're originally from uh, Arkansas and uh, call Olympia home now. Yeah. Uh, Palmer, you are from Minnesota. Yeah. So that's a good uh, 15, 1,600 miles. That's about right. Yeah. How'd you guys end up together? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, we met at a festival in Winona, Minnesota called the Boats and Bluegrass Festival. And both of us were playing banjo and string band. And I told Palmer that I liked his melodic style, and I think he liked that I knew what a melodic style was. <laughs> and, um, we ended up around a campfire that night and just kind of making music and enjoying each other and didn't see each other for another three years. And When I went solo, he said, hey, it looks like you need a singing partner. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's been downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you guys got together, uh, you know, the conventional wisdom usually is to, uh, to hit the road and, uh, and play together and, and get a bond in that manner. You guys kind of went about it in a different regard in that, uh, that you pretty much recorded almost immediately. Is that, is that a yeah, true well, statement? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did do that, but I wouldn't say it was so much opposite of that necessarily. Um, we did a little run together in May of last year, of 2013. Oh, okay. But mostly that was just backing each other up, going back and forth, and kind of learning some songs. And then we didn't really see each other again for maybe two or three months, and then met back up in July, um, and started playing shows again right away. So we had, you know, maybe all together we had about six weeks before we recorded that record. Um, but it was definitely still very fresh, you know. So you're absolutely right about that. Now, uh, when it came to uh, to making this record, did you use songs that you both had uh, had already written, or were there songs on there that you actually wrote together as well? Uh, there are most, mostly songs that we both had written, some very much inspired by the few months right prior to that. Um, but yeah, mostly ones that we had just kind of had pieces of. And I think exclusively all songs that we'd written separate from each other. Yeah. We hadn't really started writing songs together at that point. We tried it that fall a, a little bit, kind of started playing with a little bit, but we didn't really get serious about that until probably January when we had a little more downtime, got off the road and got back into trying to write songs. Yeah, we're pretty excited about this next batch of songs that we're heading into the studio next month in Duluth um, to record, and that's a lot more songs we if, uh, if it's even half as good as the record that is 36 cents, we're all just as excited to hear it as you are. <laughs> Thank tell you. You. This is really a phenomenal record. Now, uh, when it came time to record the record, uh, you recorded with uh, Dave Simonette at the uh, Suburban Dad Studios. For those of you that don't know, uh, Dave Simonette is uh, with Trampled by Turtles. And uh, was that a, um, did you record with him? Uh, because he was someone you liked, or was it just you all happened to be in Minnesota, so you went to that studio? <laughs> uh, well, he's a friend of ours. Yeah. yeah. And um, Palmer and him had already been talking about putting together the record and had the time already set aside. Um, right, I was going to be working on a solo record around oh. that time. Um, but we had that was booked maybe like six months prior, and I was like, well, this is what I'm working on now. How about we do this with that time? And Dave and I are also met at that same festival, and, um, and we're friends, and I think it just turned out to be easy, and it just kind of all made sense 
Now, uh, Dave, uh, he engineered and recorded the record for you, but he didn't actually produce the record. Did you guys produce yourselves? Did did he help a little in that regard, or did was yeah. there a third? It was third pretty outside organic. Producer? Like we just kind of went in there and recorded it all live, and um, there, he added a little sparkle. And yeah, he played he played instruments on a couple of tracks. Um, they, cool. Just some like you know some uh, piano keys and stuff like that. On another song, he did like some. Uh, Ambient electric guitar. Yeah, it almost sounds like a pedal steel in the background of one of the songs. Oh, um, and, he, nice. and that was him. Um, Ryan Young played fiddle on a tune or two. Mm -hmm. And he was definitely there involved. On a couple of songs, we didn't quite know what we were going to do with it yet. Um, and so he kind of helped build a couple of songs that way. And he was definitely very... Um, he was very involved in, like, I think you should take that again. Or, I think that was great, you should just keep it, you know, and that sort of stuff. So in that regard, uh, as you said, it was a really organic recording session where you really didn't have anything 100% set in stone. You just kind of went in and started playing and kind of see where it, where it went. Uh, well, we, we or had did the you parts. Know? We had the songs arranged and the and the parts already kind of decided At least for the last upon. Three weeks. Of right. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we kind of just went at it the same way we would a live show or something. Was there a, was there anything that changed from uh, from like you said you had about six weeks where you kind of backed each other up on songs to get to to learn the songs and know each other? Uh, did you record any of those songs? And if so, did anything change from playing them live to playing them in the studio? I think now we listen at them, and since we've had a year on them, they've changed. Just kind of. Yeah, almost all of them we play at least a little noticeably different to us, you know. Um, I don't know if between that six month period where they started and where they ended up, if it, if it was a whole lot different. I think that really accurately captured, like that, initial kickoff of the group of the duet. Yeah. Now, once the uh, the songs are recorded and and the records out there and uh, people have heard it and the fans are coming to see you, uh, do you feel any obligation to continue to play them the way that they're recorded, or uh, or do you have do you feel the freedom to be able to embellish or change it up a little bit from night to night? I don't personally feel any obligation to play it just like the record. Um, I mean, I, I tend to write very I'm very lick driven, mm -hmm. so I tend to keep the licks that I've chosen but like we kind of open up spaces sometimes for exploring but that's kind of specific to parts of a song sure and so I think that there's some songs that maybe have a little more ability to morph mm -hmm. and other ones that might like change tempo um, but most of them I would say stay very cl fairly close to shape as far as we know but it can't help but change over time <laughs> sure yeah we I remember we had the we got an email after doing a house concert in Seattle from a guy um, who wrote us a really long email, like supportive, but sort of just like letting us know what he thinks about what we're doing, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he, he kind of, at one point he mentioned how, like that last song that we did, Pear Tree, he mentioned like how he really loved the record version of it, but he liked something about the way that I phrased one, like, <laughs> The cadence on one line of the way I was doing it now, you know, I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's wild. And that's kind of why I asked that particular question, because I know a lot of the fans, especially of this genre, they, they are so educated uh, in some ways about how these records are put together and, and how the songs are played. That, right. uh, like, for me, e even though, you know, I'm a DJ and I should know these things, I, I'm i not what you'd call an audiophile. I, I'm not going to hear minor changes and things uh, from a live record to, you know, what was recorded. But I have a lot of friends that be, oh, my God, did you hear that? They, they played a drop chord there instead of that. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but okay, if you say so. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never been one to be able to make the same recipe twice, you know. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that to some extent we're both... I think part of the reason we get along so well is that we both kind of are, are feelers in the moment. And um, so if the song's going this way, we're both going that way with it, versus like trying to keep a shape that we mm -hmm. we're sure of. Well, that song ago. actually, like Pear Tree on the record, is a double guitar song. Oh, yeah, I played it in Drop And um, Kendall's, play Kendall's been playing banjo on that song maybe ever since we recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, before I uh, before I waste all of our time here, uh, I know I would love to hear another song. You guys got another song? Yeah, um, we're thinking about doing Rosie off Kendall's latest solo record.
Excellent. And we're going to go into the studio. We're going to the Sacred Heart Studios uh, in Duluth the next month, and we're going to be recording it as the duet.
swear I actually got goosebumps during that one. <laughs> that was incredible. Thank you. Wow. So uh, the name of that one was Rosie, and that's on Kendall's uh, newest solo release? Yes, it's on, uh, it's on It Can Be Done, the last record I put out on K Records. And uh, if you want to check out uh, uh, more information on either Kendall or Palmer, uh, they do have their own personal websites uh, besides the Lois Pear website. You can find Kendall at uh, kendallwinter.com, and Kendall is spelled K-E-N-D-L. Thanks, Brad. Winter. <laughs> and then uh, palmertlee.com as well, and you can get uh, as much information about both of them and the uh, projects they're doing other than the, uh, the Lois Pear at those particular websites. i got a couple more questions for you guys, but uh, before I get to them, i got to take care of a little business here first. I hope you don't mind. Uh, let's see, I need to take a moment and, uh, and say thank you to the Whidbey Pies Cafe for being a KSER business believer. Uh, it's businesses like yours that are the lifeblood of independent public radio, and uh, it's your generous donations that uh, continue to allow us to do what we do and uh, allow us to bring you these incredible uh, live in-studio sessions we're doing today with the lowest pair. All right, uh, thank you for your patience while I took care of that. No now, uh, Kendall, I wanted to uh, to ask you uh, about being Ms. October. Oh. <laughs> and uh, for the folks that, uh, that don't know, uh, last year, as a matter of fact, I had a, a guest in here uh, by the name of Erin uh, English. Oh, and great. she was the, uh, the first one that uh, brought to our attention the uh, Banjo Babe... Ba <laughs> Banjo Babes calendar and uh, CD that was going along for that. And Kendall, you were also part of that project. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about uh, what the experience was like for you. Oh, well, um, I was really excited about the idea of a project that brought women banjo players together in, in support of each other. Um, I hosted, there's an accordion babes calendar that I got the idea from originally. Um, and I hosted a couple accordion babes at my house for a, a summer solstice concert a couple of years ago and I thought oh this would be really great to do a banjo babes calendar and I was hanging out with um, Evie Levine in, uh, in the Bay Area and she was really into it. She's a wonderful banjo player and she introduced me to Erin English and at first I was uh, wanting to collaborate with Erin to do it and then at some point we were just starting the Lois Pair project and I realized I didn't have any time and Erin English just took it on by storm. And it was really neat because I don't think any of us off the top of our heads knew 12 women banjo players that were doing it professionally. Right. Um, and so it was kind of a really cool way to just connect. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it was a, it was just a great resource to uh, to be able to get the CD because uh, Aaron sent me a copy of the CD, and and see all of these people that I may not have known. Now, your work I was familiar with beforehand oh. uh, because I was a big big fan of your CD Apple Core. I think oh. uh, we talked a little bit about it. I, I play that one all the time, uh, and and so it was really cool to uh, to see you know eleven other artists and and you know kind of be able to uh, see what they do. Uh, because a lot of people just think banjo is banjo, but you listen to the 12 ladies on the CD, and they are very different styles, uh, right. very different ways of doing things. And uh, so that was really, really nice. Do you uh, do you know if there's going to be a 2015 calendar? I have not heard about one, but I keep meaning to check in about it. Yeah, if, uh, if you'd like to know, I think there are still some copies of the uh, 2014 calendar available. Uh, you can go to banjobabes.com. Uh, and you can also, uh, without getting the calendar, you can also just get the CD. And, uh, and I believe all the proceeds go to a, a very good cause. So uh, banjobabes.com, check that out if you, uh, if you get a chance. Uh, it was just a, a wonderful thing. So uh, thank you, and uh, yeah. thanks to Aaron as well for putting yeah, that together. You. It was a really neat project. Now, uh, Palmer, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit. Uh, the story on, on your website of how you came to play the banjo and how you came to put together your instrument, I thought oh, yeah. was pretty interesting, and I was wondering if you could share that with uh, with our listeners. Uh, sure. Um, Frank and banjo. Frank and banjo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, one of my favorite things about banjo and what um, really turned me on to it, I mean, I started playing guitar first, and then as soon as I really got into banjo, I, I never looked back, and a huge reason about that was just because it's... Uh, it's a modular instrument. It's very 
it's a tinkerer's instrument, and I really love that about it. Um, so my family found out that I was um, I was starting to write songs and I was playing guitar, and, and there was a couple of banjos floating around in my family, and so they made sure that I got a hold of them, and. Um, you know, I just took the back resonators off of them and realized that it's all just nuts and bolts. And, um, so I totally disassembled both of them um, in the loft that I was staying at at the time and just laid all the parts out on the floor and kind of picked the coolest ones that I liked the best <laughs> and put it back together um, into a totally new, different banjo. Um, and just kind of kept doing that over and over again. Um, so this one actually that, I, that I'm playing now used to be an Alvarez from the 70s um, and now it's just the neck of the Alvarez um, which is cool it's a big old chunky chunk neck which is a little hard to play for some people like some people are just like whoa what a bizarre feeling neck but I've <laughs> kind of gotten used to it I'm, I've dreamed about having like a like a slicker and you know, more bluegrass style neck that I could theoretically move around quicker on, but I like the tone of it, and I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You yeah, kind of sure. have a signature sound <laughs> sure. of your own, and, uh, and it's it's really special, and it's actually it's uh, it's it's quite amazing to uh, to sit down and listen to. I, I've enjoyed uh, while I was prepping for this interview, I watched quite a few YouTube videos uh, mm -hmm. that you have put together, both as the lowest pair and, and solo stuff that you did, mm -hmm. and uh, you're just both such incredible musicians. I'd oh, say don't do anything that changes what you're doing today. <laughs> Other than your natural progression, you know, as you mature, because what you're doing works, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I want to remind everyone, uh, just in case you are just tuning in, this is the Lois Pair. They're in town today because they're going to be performing in Seattle this evening at the Tractor Tavern. Uh, the show is with Charlie Parr, and yeah. uh, the Lois Pair goes on at 830 so uh, there you go, make your plans. Uh, before I let you guys get out of here, can we get one more song from you? Sure thing. Absolutely. This is one you'll think you've heard before. Well, I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Headed to Louisiana, my true love, old sea. Rained all night there, left the weather, it was dry. The sun's so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. And I'm crying in my sleep. It's so long. Sleeping alone. Oh, Susanna. I cry. I need you here
Billy died. When I pet him very, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susan. Oh, Susan. track from the Lois Pears latest CD, 36 cents. Kendall Winter, Palmer T. Lee, thank you so much for uh, spending part of your day here with us. Yeah, thank um, you. Any final thoughts for the listeners before we say goodbye? Um, we should come out to the Tractor Tavern tonight. The, the man we're playing with, Charlie Parr, is one of our favorites. Living legend. The guy's incredible. Yeah. He'd be missing out if he didn't make it. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you can be there, and uh, you know, Charlie is amazing, but uh, don't sell yourself short either. <laughs> the Lois <laughs> Pair is definitely worth the price of admission alone. So uh, thank you again both for, uh, for being here. Hopefully we'll see you again the next time that you come through town, and uh, be sure to be listening to KSER throughout the rest of the summer, as uh, you will continue to hear some great music from the Lois Pair played right here in the Sunlit Room.